Reddit. What's a time you saw an a-hole kid get what they deserve? I was working at Pizza Hut at the time. Some kid around age 10 or so went into the men's restroom and pooped in the urinal, then proceeded to smear it all over the gosh darn place. We knew it was the kid due to it not being very busy that day and a co-worker spotted the mess right after the kid left the bathroom. We weren't sure what to do, but the manager decided to tell the parents. The father was pissed. He made the boy clean it up, and he stood over him yelling at him and made him clean it all. The boy was crying, but you know, F that kid. He was old enough to know not to do that crap. No pun intended. He wasn't mentally impaired. He was just a jerk. We were all glad the dad stepped up. Otherwise, we would have had to clean it. Yeah, that's a solid move by the father, making his boy clean up and holding him accountable. I'm hopeful that as the boy grows up a little bit more, that moment remains very embarrassing, but also thought-provoking to him. Probably a good lesson learned there. I was driving a fire truck back from an all-night fire around 7 a.m., this truck's diesel mixture was a bit rich, so if you sat for a while and gunned it, you might get smoke from the exhaust. As I approached a highway from a residential street I was on, there were six middle school kids waiting for the school bus on the corner. As some kids do, they stand or walk in the street and refuse to move for cars. As I came to the intersection, one little jerk looked at me smugly and did not move causing me to have to go into the oncoming lane at the intersection. I patiently waited until I could make my turn onto the highway and then gunned the crap out of the fire truck's diesel engine, causing a thick blob of black smoke to come out of the exhaust, which was mid-truck pointed right at the kids. They were coated in thick, oily diesel fumes, especially Mr. Smugface. And last I saw, they were halfway down the block on the sidewalk, running with me on the road, spewing smoke after them. Mr. Smug looked at me with terror in his little, half-developed mind. Our neighbors have five kids, and they're all brats, but the middle child, who's a boy, is the worst. He was in front of his house one day while I was outside doing some landscaping in the front yard. A shiny new red pickup truck drove by, then slammed on the brakes and started backing up. It stopped in front of the brat's house. I heard the lady in the passenger seat yell, Did you just throw a rock at our car? Of course the boy denied it and started making some ridiculous excuse, like he always does when people catch him making mischief. The woman cut him off and told him to go get his mom. Apparently the woman in the truck was also from the neighborhood and was also fed up with the kids and their nonsense. The mom finally came out, holding the youngest brat, and the woman in the truck proceeded to give her the kind of verbal beatdown that the mom should have had been giving her own kid all along. Watching that mom stand there and listen to some stranger rightfully criticize her parenting for 10 minutes straight was gratifying. The only thing better was watching the brat squirm the whole time. Sounds like the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Parents do a pretty good job at projecting onto their kids, so I'm not surprised that the little brat was outside causing problems like that. Guaranteed that the family continued fighting amongst themselves after that incident, probably pointing fingers at each other and blaming each other. I have a feeling that taking responsibility isn't a concept that really exists over there. Worked in a pet store when I was in high school, and we had a real issue with this particular family letting their kids act like D-bags all over the store. One fateful day, a whole family walks in and D-bag daughter goes right to the puppy room. Kids can't hold dogs without a parent, and no one picks up a pup unless we are the ones to get them out of their little runs for them. Well, little Miss Buttwipe reaches in and grabs a pup by the leg and tries to pull it towards the wall of the run so she can lift it out. I see this on my CC monitor by the register and run over to stop her from hurting this puppy. By the time I get in, she has hoisted this dog up by one leg and nearly has him over the wall of the run. Mom and Dad are standing right there, not doing anything when I walk in. Before I can get a word out, the daughter sees me, drops the puppy back into the run, and turns around like nothing happened. I yell at the girl, and her parents obviously get defensive, so I offer to play back the tape of their daughter hauling a puppy up by its leg, then dropping it four feet onto a tile floor. I tell them they need to go, and of course, they refuse. As I go back up front to inform the manager, I notice the daughter putting her fingers into the feeder rat cage while shaking it. The rat in that cage has a jumbo feeder and was separated from the other feeders because she had just had a litter of pups. Now, rat moms are good moms. They will protect their babies. Now, this is important. The daughter has her finger in the cage and is banging on the opposite side when karma strikes. Mama Rat is not having any of this and runs right up to this girl's soft pink finger and bites down hard on the little jerk's finger. 
all hell breaks loose because Mama Rat isn't letting go, and Rat bites blow. Parents freak out, the manager tries to calm the situation, and I get a band-aid for the little jerk, so she stops bleeding all over the floor. It was quite the experience. Ah, wild animals are the great equalizer and have an amazing ability to hand down the wrath of karma swiftly. It's like when stupid tourists at Yellowstone National Park approach bison and then act surprised when one charges them and pummels them into the next state. Play stupid games and you will win stupid prizes. I once saw a kid run up to a man and kick him square in the giblets. The man immediately dropped to his knees, then pulled a gun from his waistband and aimed it at the kid to scare him off. I'm not one to say that anyone deserves one thing or another, but I lived in a fairly bad neighborhood at the time, so maybe that kid learned a lesson about what might happen if you mess with someone. Used to coach youth lacrosse in Georgia, volunteer hours through my college team. I had a kid whose name, I kid you not, was Harsh. Anyways, I had the elementary school age kids for practice one night with Harsh. We went through a drill with a weaker kid who ended up costing his team the point. They get to the end of the line for the drill and Harsh, a fifth grader, hits the second grader in the helmet with his stick. So I stop practice, line all the kids up, and make them do 30-yard down and back sprints. I make Harsh call out every sprint and every kid has to call out, thank you, Harsh, instead of whatever number sprint they are on. After 10 of them, I restarted the practice and the other kids beat him to a pulp beat the crap out of him. It was awesome. The little jerk-off that pushed my daughter down and stole her pinwheel toy from her at the park completely biffed it into the slide running away. I chuckled. I won't even pretend like I didn't. Kid was there unsupervised and terrorizing the younger kids, so I calmly walked up smirking after he was laying there a bit winded and grabbed my daughter's toy back from the ground beside him. With some very protective parents out there, that kid is lucky that something worse didn't happen to them. Once they see their daughter get pushed down like that, they might flash over to red. Hopefully, the daughter got to witness the karma too and revel in the fact that sometimes justice prevails. I was working the shoe department at Sears back when I was 18, and one day this little jerk kid is in there with his unattentive mother. He's running around, knocking stuff over, making a mess, so I ask her to keep him in check, and she refuses. The kid starts running circles around the register. Well, the register was on a little island in the middle of the department and had a slide-out shelf about waist-high to an average person. So I'm ringing up an actual customer, so I slide the shelf out and set this person's shoebox on the shelf. Little jerk comes flying around the corner and wham! Forehead connects with the shelf in a loud crack. He immediately falls backwards, blammo, right on the floor, and then starts wailing. The mother gives me a dirty look and gathers up her brat, making her way out of the store. The customer and I both watch her go and then just sort of drug it off. I used to work in a shop and we had fake display furniture, so the beds we used to display our sheets and pillows were actually just wooden boxes with headboards attached. And some kid was annoying me, shouting and running around, dropping pastry all over the floor and knocking things over. And then he spots one of the fake beds and takes a running jump to land on it. And the look on his face when he realized it was wooden was hilarious. I felt a bit bad when he started to cry, but there were clear signs saying not to touch the display, so I guess he got what he deserved. Not only do you have the signs, but I'm guessing that even a kid could figure out what is made of wood versus a real bed and a soft mattress. Not only did the kid get a lesson in not roughhousing and horseplaying in a place of business, but hopefully also got a lesson to pay attention to their surroundings. I'm part of my school's football team, and as always, there's one kid where his mom pretty much bought him into the program. Well, this kid thinks he's the best crap since sliced bread, and let it be known he was possibly one of the worst linebackers I have seen in my life. Well, one day, this kid said something jerkish to an offensive lineman about his weight. The dang lineman never even talked to this a-hole before this point. So the a-hole goes back to his position with a smug look, and the lineman, obviously pissed, goes and gets into position without saying a word. Well, the next play was a run into the hole that the guard was in. The linebacker stands back to evaluate the play, which was really his way of chickening out of making a tackle. Well, the lineman took him up as a block and completely threw him face up onto the ground five-ish yards away, and he landed on the ground with an audible clap from his helmet hitting the ground. He stayed on the ground for like 10 minutes and got a moderate concussion and a broken rib. Needless to say, 
he didn't try out the next year, and no one misses him. Football is a great equalizer, and especially if you don't have the talent to back up running your mouth. Sounds like a kid who has probably only ever heard the word yes in his life and has had everything handed to him. He probably never got any constructive criticism from his parents. I think something parents forget sometimes is that there is tremendous value in teaching their kids that they are not actually the most special human on earth. It might be a better approach to teach them that they have to work for success and recognition from others.